Little Bo Peep from Oregon in the building. Actually from Indiana. Indiana. I have an Oregon number. Indiana. What's up? What's up? What's up? How you feel? How you feel today? Oh, been rough. A um, little bit about myself. I was a former LEO that uh, worked for the state of Indiana. I was a correctional equivalent of a correctional sergeant, and I did that for six months. My okay. lieutenant was stabbed fifty-six times. Okay, wait, and wait, 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 we 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 getting a little bit too far. <laughs> yeah, we getting a little bit too far. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot okay. to take in. So, so basically, say, I left what, law enforcement. What? Wait, 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 wait because wait, of what wait, happened. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Let's let's slow down and let's back up a little bit. So, you say you say you're a a L E a L E O L. Well, what is that? Uh, for short, that is law enforcement officer. Oh, so that is your police, your correctional officers. Oh, okay, okay. State so patrol, all of them. Okay, so which one was you? I was a state trooper for Indiana for a bit, and then I switched to correctional uh, department of corrections. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's tip on that for a minute. So you you was an Indiana state trooper for how long? About a year and a half with academy time, and then minus the six months for corrections. Okay, so was state trooper? Uh, what was? Yes, sir. What was? Uh, what was? You know what was the way of getting into that? Because I know it is it, it takes a long time to even to even get into the uh, the training aspect academy of of, mm-hmm. of troopering. So how 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 did the so, journey start for you to get to 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 be a state trooper? Well, my journey is a lot different because each agency, each state is a lot different on their guidelines and policies and whatnot. So for me, I had to pass a physical assessment test, PAT for short. Mm -hmm. There is a selection process. Um, Now they do these hiring events, and it's been all over the news that they're looking for people, which I see why. Um, Especially in this area where, where I live, a lot of people are scared because there is cop killers now on the loose. And it's kind of like a double-edged sword with some of these recruits that are coming in. We've lost 70 officers this past year, and only 30 were uh, accepted and successfully completed the training. Okay. So with that, you go through your nine-step process. You have a written exam, a polygraph. You have your physical portion. Then you have an interview and um, like an oral interview. You sit in front of these. Five people, depending on how many they have at the day. I had five. You sit there and ask. They ask these questions to you to kind of get to know you. Mm-hmm. Um, like one of them is just like, would you give your grandmother a speeding ticket if she sped in front of you on duty? What you say? Some of these off the wall questions. What? What? what I said, you say no that? matter what, <laughs> no matter what, speeding is speeding. If even if it's three miles an hour over. You know, okay, hey, so they try to, uh, so, you know, so they try to ask you like assess, like, like real situation assessment questions. Like if your mother, yes, if, if, if your mother was uh, doing illegal stuff, would you still arrest her type deal? Or would you call the cops? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Or like, um, for instance, like I was on TikTok the other day doing a live and I witnessed um, a tractor trailer on fire. I took an oath to protect and do what I needed to to respond to these situations. Mm-hmm. I actually pulled over on my live. I'm like, guys, I got to go. I got to call this in to make sure, you know, hey, somebody's coming to help these people. Those little mm-hmm. dinky fire extinguishers we get ain't going to help. <laughs> And I mean, I I wish I got out and talked to the driver because I didn't see him anywhere. But I made sure, you know, there was no one in there. And he should have pulled the fifth wheel, uh, separated it because it was a trailer tire. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, so certain that- cer- certain circu- situations, you know, you gotta they gotta perceive what you gotta do for those. Okay. All right. And so- how you handle it. So fast forward through the process, you you got into the academy. How how long was the academy for, and and what was some everyone of the parts is different? Um, they keep changing it. The academy for Indiana now is six months. 
for the IOA. It's the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. It's out of Plainsfield, Indiana. It's right outside of Indi- Indianapolis on 74 mm-hmm. or 70. One of the major interstates out that way. Mm-hmm. And you go there. Um, you get weekends off. They've changed a lot of their protocols. Because I've looked into going back into it, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, for vets, it's six months, usually. Um, for most recruits, it's a year. Now, they changed it up to everybody does six months, so I don't know what they do for vets now. Um, it's very much changed since I've done that, and then they've done these little, um, like, training groups. I don't know, like, kind of, like, days where they get these recruits that want to learn more about it after the ride-along, and they do physical tests with them, you know, and they do mock-up PATs and stuff to see where you're at. It's like a cool little control group that you get to meet with people from around the state, kind of like a workshop and you get to meet these people. Some of them you'll actually see in your academy. It's really cool to see. And then you get to speak to other higher troopers and like <laughs> meet all your recruiters even. It's kind of cool. Okay. I okay. wish they had that one. I always started doing that. <laughs> okay. So, so throughout the, uh, uh, so throughout the academy, you, uh, you was able to, you was able to complete it. How many, went, how many of yep. you guys went in and how many of you guys completed it? So usually your classes are anywhere from 30 to, well, well over 100 applicants. Um, they usually, once they accept you to through the process, you're left with about 150, usually. From what uh, my old sergeant used to tell me. Um, but from what I experienced out of my class, Probably about ten percent dropped off immediately once you're in the academy. All right. So that could be anywhere from five to fifteen, if not thirty. So how many? How, how many was it when you graduated? Like how many was in your? Class? About five to ten. I would say ten. There's yeah. a couple of reasons they look at drugs. They they look at it all. Like if you're late to, um, it's all based on your personality, demeanor, and how bad you want it. It's very competitive. Um, yeah, it's nice to be friendly, friendly and help others. But at the same time, you got to think you also got to pass this. All You're right. given X amount of time to pass this academy. <laughs> All right. And yes, you have to pass tests with grades. I think it's 80% or better. All right. So now you have to be book smart too. So now you graduate, you got your badge, you're, you're a state trooper now. Well, you're, you're, you're a rookie state trooper. So of course you had to Basically go, you have, you had to go out with, mm-hmm. uh, with a CO, FTO, um, FTO, what, STO, field training officer. So what was your, what was your experience, uh, with that? Uh, when you do the, you're like FTO, they, they kind of split it up depending on where you're at. Some of them are really, really crappy. Some are kind of, you know, they have your back. They want what's best for you so you can learn. Well, you know, was, it's kind of like trucking in a way. What, your what trainer was, can make you or break you. What was yours in, in your situation? Well, in a male-dominated field, you don't have a lot of nice trainers. Um, in my opinion, I had the worst one out of the whole entire bunch for where I was hired out of. I was District 13 outpost. We didn't have a lot of females out of that one. Mm-hmm. And I I had the worst of the worst stuck up. And I don't want to say too much, but right. he definitely was not the best one to be training. Okay. Okay. Uh, could you touch on a situation that you felt that... Uh, what? All right, let me rephrase that. What was the good that you had with them and what was the bad that you had with them? <laughs> Sorry. I don't think there's really any good with him besides the fact that he's just there. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just there if things hit off and things exploded or things took a whole different turn on danger level. Other than that, he was a waste of space. Mm. Damn and it, a waste man. of oxygen. So did you actually he, learn anything <laughs> from him? <laughs> well, how not to kill somebody, that's for sure. Oh, I mean, he definitely made my self-control and, like, the emotions 
which women are very emotional. I hate to say it, but we are, you know, and we have a more higher tolerance or compassion, I guess you can say for people. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing he kind of, I guess, taught me is to try not to take my frustrations and emotions out on other people. Kind of just deal with them in your own certain way because I really, really did not like working with my coworker on this. Okay. I really didn't. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure you can probably relate with some of your trainers, especially in trucking. Like, you just want to get off that truck and get away. Okay. I, I guarantee you can feel that. So what, because I, I mean, even through my trainers, I was like that. <laughs> so, so you, of course, you you made it through the training process. Now you're mm-hmm. now you're solo. You're you still a rookie, but you're solo now. What were some of the experiences that you 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 experienced out of, out in the real world doing you know real world stuff, stopping people, helping people? I'm gonna have tell you, you. Have you got any? any have you got any any situations that force you to pull your service weapon? Almost, almost. I have had some weird um, policy, like borderline stuff, that I had to reevaluate. Um, I rolled. I actually conducted a traffic stop on a person who was recklessly weaving in and out of traffic. Actually, mm-hmm. I found out there was two juveniles in the back seat, and then there was a mom and another mom front driver's side and front passenger. Mm-hmm. I did not go up there like I normally do. I listened to my gut feeling mm-hmm. and I kind of was right. Um, my gut feeling was telling me, hey, there's something off about this vehicle. I'm going to chance it with the traffic blowing by, even though you're not supposed to, mm-hmm. because people don't usually like to move over. They don't like to slow down. So you're putting yourself in a pinch. If that vehicle hits that vehicle, you're going to get probably sandwiched. Right. Well, it was a good thing I did that because there was a Glock 19 in the door little, you know, the little plastic part where they put mm. folders and stuff in the door. Mm-hmm. Fully loaded, ready, one in the chamber, no safety off mm. or on. It was ready. It was ready to go. And not only that, there was coke, meth, a lot of drugs involved. Lots of it. Wow. There's a hypodermic needle as well with two kids in the back. I never really yelled at these women. Um, you kept your composure. I, not only that, I did it for the kids. I hate kids' calls because they're 50-50. But I also love kids' calls or when kids are involved. Um, I used to, I grew up in a volunteer fire house. My stepdad was a firefighter for X amount of years. And they used to have this little toy box in their trucks are in the firehouse so i kind of incorporated that idea hoping you know my daughter would appreciate that and stuff so i always put it in the back of my trunk of my squad car with my tools and everything else you never know what you would need and i will always have a box of stuffed animals for kids in those situations that are either terrified or they don't know what to expect now on cases like that usually you have to call dcs now i was going through a rough time uh, with my daughter and her dad and whatnot, DCS was actually involved with me because of her genetic issues. It took six months to figure out, but that's why I don't have custody of my daughter. And I knew how shady uh, Lake County DCS is, Department of Child Services in the state of Indiana is. They're just crooked throughout the whole state. But I was like, you need to call somebody to pick these kids up before the state takes these kids because i don't want these kids leaving this car miserable lost forever you know you don't n- know what goes on in those foster homes i don't want when, that for these kids when you when you walked up to the car and you you said you know previously you said that you know you had a gut feeling so you was already prepared mm-hmm. you you was already prepared hand on a hand, hand on your service weapon ready for whatever situation that was going to come your way Yep. So in the academy, we are trained on the 45 ACP. We extensively use 45 or 40. Um, usually females especially use the 45. I don't know why ISP does that in the Indiana State Patrol, um, where the 9 millimeter is a little more accurate, especially with recoil. However, um, we use 
specifically the 45. And I always have my hand ready if need be, but usually I'm pretty chill, pretty relaxed about it. I usually keep my hands up at my chest, you know, right on the end of my... Always wanted to be famous, just being really, just being honest. My haters won't always be nameless, give them no clout, I give them no power. Creators are different than haters.